on Richard's farm here yeah, where we are today there's been a single field which had exactly the same identical management practices and that's been split into two and we've got kale on one side and the diverse mix on the other. So we've done monocultures now for nine years and then I started doing little mixes with two to three mixes a couple years ago but now with this project we can really focus on how good it is and have 16 varieties and I've seen a massive difference just in the last few months so it's it's really interesting to see. Farmers are always a bit wary of using monoculture brassicas because of the risk of runoff and soil erosion so having a multi-species crop can mitigate a lot of that damage that can be caused. Maybe at the beginning when I heard 16 varieties that we were going with I was probably a bit sceptical. As I found in the past, the more you put in, something's always going to grow, so you've got less likely to have a failed single monoculture crop. In terms of the species mix, we went through a big list of species and the farmers selected what they thought would work well and that were winter hardy species. So that was really important for them to decide what would work best on their own farms. Four of them are clovers, berms and clover, white clover, ass like clover. We've got vetches, sunflowers, kale, hybrid kale, oats, ryegrass, chicory and plantain. The diverse mix, there's so much in it that's good for everything. The bees, the birds, the pollinators. When we started we couldn't find a worm and now there's loads and loads of them. So it's really good to see. And also a variety of feed for the animal. One of the reasons I'm really excited about this trial is that grazing a winter brassica usually leaves the fields in a completely muddy condition post-grazing and that results in a lot of erosion, runoff and sediment loss across the farm. Normally with kale crop you have to put in hay bales to add some fibre into the diet otherwise it goes straight through them essentially and with our diverse mix what we have is a lot more fibre in there so then you wouldn't have to feed the bales and that has an economic implication. The diverse fodder crop improves soil health compared to monoculture because of the diversity above ground. You then create a massive amount of diversity below ground with all the bugs that live down there. Through the summer we are growing a huge biomass which is pumping a lot of carbon into the soil. We're harvesting nitrogen, we're mining phosphorus, so yeah, it's a win-win. Straight away we noticed a reduction in compaction, better aggregation, more nodulation on the legumes. So we're getting a lot more diversity and a lot more of the cycling going on within the soil. When the farmers are moving their animals daily, they'll look at welfare observations such as are the animals standing in a lot of deep mud? Are they happy? Are they bellowing and making a lot of noise? So there'll be an anecdotal report, but those sort of reports are really important. I think farmers are very guilty of worrying what the next door farmer is going to think you're doing. I, on the other hand, like to wind up the neighbours and get them talking. And this year, the amount of different crops I've put in has really got them talking, especially the diverse mix with all the sunflowers. People think I've lost the plot, but I've had farmers come round, I've done private little walks with them, and they're fully converted, they're on board, they want to change, they want to try something different. If other farmers are interested in saving themselves a lot of money and looking at outwintering, I can only see positives, I can't see any negatives for growing a multi-species as far as the wildlife and the environment and the soil health and the livestock. So I would definitely consider giving it a go.